Emergency management, or EM, in the Corps of Engineers involves unique authorities, relationships, and activities. This video is intended to provide a basic awareness of the high-level roles and responsibilities of USACE during disaster response and recovery. This 30,000-foot view of USACE disaster operations is provided for USACE military personnel and others who are not normally in but are considered part of the extended EM community of practice and may find themselves engaged in disaster response activities. In the event of a natural or man-made disaster, USACE is prepared and ready to respond as part of the federal government's unified national response to disasters and emergencies in support of state, territorial, and tribal governments. In any disaster, USACE's top priorities are to save lives and protect property and support immediate emergency response priorities for USACE, DOD, FEMA, and the federal government. The key thing to remember about civil disaster operations is that they are domestic, and domestic disaster operations differ greatly from overseas contingency military operations. The authorities and funding under which civil disaster operations occur are finite, specific, and legally mandated. There are three basic and fundamental items that USACE must have before it undertakes any disaster response activity. The appropriate authority for the activity, the appropriate funding source for the activity, and the appropriate request to undertake the activity. Let's take a look at the first fundamental item USACE must have to respond to disasters, the authority to do so. The major circumstances under which the Corps can respond to a disaster are under our own authorities through Public Law 8499 in support of FEMA during a Stafford Act event or to a federal agency other than FEMA under the Economy Act. Public Law 8499 is the Corps of Engineers' basic authority to provide for emergency activities in support of tribal, state, and local governments prior to, during, and after a flood or storm-related event. PL 8499 authorizes a diverse list of activities within the Corps' emergency management portfolio, including but not limited to disaster preparedness, such as training, planning, and coordination, emergency response and flood fighting operations, the repair or restoration of eligible flood risk management projects damaged or destroyed by flood, as well as provisions necessary for emergency water assistance, advanced measures, and hazard mitigation. The majority of routine USACE emergency response activities falls under PL 8499. However, other USACE emergency response activities are performed under the authority of the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act, or Stafford Act. When the President declares a federal disaster at the request of a state or tribe, it activates a network of assistance. The Stafford Act gives FEMA the federal lead with help from contributing federal agencies. The National Response Framework assigns specific roles and responsibilities to 30 federal departments and agencies to provide coordinated disaster relief and recovery operations as requested by the state or tribe. Only FEMA may accept a mission request from a state or tribe under the Stafford Act. No other federal agency may accept a request for assistance. FEMA accepts or denies the request. If FEMA accepts, FEMA determines the federal agency to which the direction and funding will be given to provide assistance. Under the NRF, the federal agencies are grouped into Emergency Support Functions, or ESFs. The Corps of Engineers is the lead agency for ESF-3, Public Works and Engineering, and its mission sets include debris removal and clearance, temporary emergency power, temporary housing and critical public facilities, temporary roofing, and infrastructure assessment. The Corps also lends trained personnel to support other ESFs, such as ESF-9 Search and Rescue, when activated. Ensuring under which specific authority the Corps is responding in a given event is vital in order to confirm that we are indeed authorized to carry out a specific activity and determine the appropriate funding source for that activity. It's essential and legally required to use specific types of funds for specific types of activities. Maintaining and allocating appropriate funding during disaster response operations can be extremely complex and failure to do so can result in an Anti-Deficiency Act or ADA violation. This brings us to our third fundamental item USACE must have to respond to disasters, a request to do so. It's important to remember that regardless of the applicable authority, USACE is never in charge of the overall disaster response. PL 8499 authorizes the Corps to support tribal, state, and local authorities in applicable disaster response and recovery efforts, but we do not lead those efforts. Typically, under the National Response Framework, the Corps can only provide support to those tribal and state authorities who have requested that support directly from FEMA. 
In such a Stafford Act event, USACE does not and should not receive direct requests for support from any tribal, state, or local authority. USACE can only provide support to those entities as assigned by FEMA through specific mission assignments. However, USACE can receive direct requests to provide emergency response and assistance activities under the Flood Control and Coastal Emergencies Appropriation authorized by Public Law 8499. The Corps may provide either technical or direct assistance under PL 8499, but again, this assistance is supplemental to local, state, and or tribal efforts and must first be requested by those entities. Specific command structure during disaster operations usually follows the incident command system, though the command structure at each node or office required during a specific event can vary. During a Stafford Act event, the Presidentially Appointed Federal Coordinating Officer, or FCO, is the senior federal manager with assigned responsibilities to manage all federal resources within a specific declared disaster area. However, the state, tribe, and local government maintain command. In an event in which USACE is responding under its own authorities, the highest ranking tribal, state, or local authority commands the overall disaster response. Again, what is important to remember is that USACE is not in charge of overall disaster response operations. We provide support to FEMA and or the tribal, state, and local authorities. USACE provides command and control of USACE resources that are executing work and specific tasks that are authorized and funded by FEMA, or if under PL 8499 by the state, tribe, or local government. We do not command or control civil disaster response operations under any authority. During a Stafford Act event, at the request of FEMA, USACE may provide a specially trained and credentialed ESF-3 management team, usually an ESF-3 team leader and or assistant team leader at strategic deployment locations. The ESF-3 management team is the USACE authorized representative and staff element linking USACE and FEMA at those locations in order to coordinate missions with FEMA and other federal, state, local, territorial, and tribal agencies. The ESF-3 management team is the USACE element which reports to the Federal Coordinating Officer. USACE also has specific district-based planning and response teams for each mission it may be assigned under ESF-3. These teams are comprised of specially trained volunteer USACE civilians who are able to deploy to disaster events when FEMA has assigned USACE an applicable mission. USACE PRTs align with our mission sets and include temporary housing and critical public facilities, temporary roofing, temporary emergency power, debris, and infrastructure assessment. USACE also has a specially trained structure specialist cadre able to provide support to ESF-9, urban search and rescue operations, if mission assigned by FEMA. Every USACE district has an Emergency Operations Center, or EOC, during an incident or event, the District EOC provides a single point of coordination for USACE response activities in its area of responsibility. The EOC will activate, as recommended by the District EM Chief and directed by the District Commander, to the level necessary to respond to requests for PL-8499 support from tribal, state, or local governments, missions and taskings from FEMA, and the USACE Operations Center as required. While an EOC can be activated under a variety of conditions, there are two primary circumstances that dictate variations in the concept of operations. The first type of activation is a USACE emergency-driven EOC activation. In this case, the EOC is activated in anticipation of a major event that can impact any of the respective district projects, assets, or personnel and or cause significant property damage or suffering within the district's area of responsibility. The second type is a FEMA-driven activation in the event of a presidentially declared disaster in the district's AOR. This activation is in support of USACE assigned FEMA activities under the National Response Framework. The EOC will focus on fully supporting each assigned mission and related deployment in a timely manner to ensure the success of the mission or missions. Division Readiness and Contingency Operations, or RCO offices, are the EM component at the Major Subordinate Command, or MSC, level. Every district is associated with a specific MSC, and during an emergency event, the associated MSC will also activate their EOC to support the impacted and supporting districts within that division, as necessary. When activated, the purpose of the division EOC is to receive mission assignments from FEMA and provide these mission assignments to the supported and supporting commands for execution. In addition, the RCO EOC provides a second level of coordination for the resources necessary to support the event. 
For example, the Division EOC will assist with the coordination of support forces or response personnel from throughout the Corps to the impacted district within the MSC. The Division EOC will also manage the coordination of funding and associated documentation from USA's headquarters to the district EOCs for all emergency management activities performed during their activation. Remember, the Emergency Manager or RCO Chief and his or her EM or RCO Office serve as a district or division commander's advisor and subject matter expert during disaster operations. The civilian professionals in district and division EM and RCO offices have a wealth of knowledge, expertise, and experience. They are your primary source for all things related to USACE disaster operations. USACE EM civilians can answer technical questions and provide information, guidance, and recommendations to command staff and others before, during, and after an event. Be sure to utilize this important resource as you begin to learn about USACE disaster response operations in greater detail. This video provided a rudimentary overview of the roles and responsibilities of USACE during disaster events. As we've learned, both USACE emergency management and civil disaster operations are intricate, dynamic, and constrained by multiple authorities, laws, and regulations. To learn more about the role of USACE in disaster operations, visit your district EM office or division RCO office and consider watching these additional videos.